and what have you, and the things that should have been in corporate names. You know, I wasn't prepared for the last uh, downturn in the economy. 2008, I took a massive seven-figure hit. Mm. I mean, it, was, it was crazy. I mean, absolutely fell off a cliff. To you know, close <laughs> that's, to that, that's a big hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like, oh, look, there it goes, up in flames. But <laughs> the reality is it taught me, you know, I, 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 it's like I call it paid tuition, right? Mm -hmm. But don't you pay the uh, uh, tuition that, that, that I paid, if I could tell you, they say, you know, uh, you know, some people learn from the, a wise person, they say learns from, uh, you know, uh, their own mistakes, but a really, really wise person learns from the mistakes of others. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's, things, yeah. there's things that I could tell you not to do in ways to set things up that, that, that something like this, I mean, again, like I said, 120 days ago, we were not thinking about this moment that we find ourselves in right now. Without a doubt. It didn't even feel like a possibility. So, um, you right now, and and oh, one thing I want to uh, mention, I see a lot of people making some really, uh, what I would, I'm going to call them unwise moves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to send you an article. It's a it's a piece that I wrote, probably one of the biggest pieces on on, on my blog in the last ten years. The, the most read piece. It's called. Um, um, uh, how to move furniture like Koreans, right? <laughs> okay. Have you ever did you, have you ever seen that piece? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I never saw that one. Okay, I got I send you this piece, but I this, definitely got to get that one. But 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 I want to I want to I want to share some game with you real quick. Okay. So back in the day, I used to live on uh, on uh, Rolling Road and Dogwood in this place called uh, Rolling Wind. Right. It was mm -hmm. like they had just bought, built it. It was really nice, new and the whole nine. And I used to go across the street and uh, take my clothes to this uh, Korean dry cleaner. Right. And so dude was like, uh, we, we developed a, a decent relationship. And, you know, Julian and Teresa, they take their stuff over there. That's my brother and his wife. And my parents, sometimes they would drop their stuff off over there or whatever. So he says, he sees me one day. He says, Mark, look, do me a favor. He says, can you come back to the shop around seven o'clock? And um, uh, I need to talk to you about something. I said, oh, okay, you know, no, no, no problem. Uh, I'll come through and, 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 and see you. I come back at seven, you know, he's closed the shop. We're standing in the front of the shop. And I was like, um, so um, uh, what'd you need? He was like, hey, do me a favor. He was like, can you pick that couch up and uh, move it to the back of the shop? Really? I was like, what? I was like, I said, like, 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 I'm sorry. You want me to to pick this couch up and move it to the back of the shop? I was like, "Did you you call me here to move your couch?" And he could see I was getting like really agitated, right? He was mm -hmm. like, "No, no, no." He says, "He said, well, um, uh, I could call the guys that are in the back working because he had all these uh, other guys from his country in the back working. I could call them and they can help us, and I can help, and we can move the couch to the to the to the back or whatever." And I said but you got all these guys here and you, what did you call me for? He's like, well, that's what I want. He said, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. He was like, um, you know, one person trying to move a couch very, very hard. You know, a lot of people <laughs> moving the couch very easy. Right. And he said, people think that when, he think that people, he said, they think that when I came to this country, I came here with some kind of money or this that, and the third. He said, me, my two brothers, my mother and my father came here. We were broke. He said, um, we all lived in a two-bedroom apartment, me and my two brothers. He said, we were grown men. He said, we came in like 24, 25, 26. He said, that's how old he and his brothers were. Mm -hmm. And he said, and then his older parents. He said, we all had these menial jobs where we made $200 a week each. He said, we would go to our jobs. And me and my brothers, we would all give our $200 each, $600 a week to my mother. And my mother and father would have their money and they would use their money to pay the bills and they would save our $600 a week, right? He said, so after the first year, we had $30,000 saved up. After the second year, he said, we had $60,000 saved up and we got the first business for the oldest brother. He was like, then we were still in this apartment doing the same thing for two more mm. years. 
saved up 60, got the second business for the second brother. He said, we did the same thing for uh, two more years. He said, now I'm telling you, we were not 15, 16, we were grown men, you know, in, in this, um, you know, in this little room together and blah, blah, blah. And after the third year, then the youngest brother, you know, got his, got his uh, business or whatever, right? He said, after that, after that six years and setting those three businesses up, we built off of those businesses. He said, my parents never worked another day, right? He was like, wow. He was like, that's how we got ourselves out of poverty. He said, I called you, he said, because I met your, he said, I, I see you, I see how you move. He's like, I met your brother and his wife. And I met, he's like, I met mommy and daddy and they're very nice. You know, he knew my parents or whatever. He was like, I see what, what, what you're doing. He's like, I just want you to hold that in your head. He said, in America, he said, a lot of families can't be successful. Mm -hmm. He said, because too early on, everybody has their own stuff. So you're paying three mortgages or three uh, rents and a whole bunch of car payments and a whole bunch of uh, bills and all that wealth is being sucked out of your family and into the society before you establish anything that's income producing, mm. right? They, they stayed together until they had put three income producing assets in place mm. and they sacrificed, you know, being young men out dating and doing their thing and blah, blah, blah. And they sacrificed, you know, going off on their own and all that stuff. But it was only six years. It was only six years. It wasn't so it wasn't it wasn't a lifetime. And he sent me around to go his other brother's own uh, dry cleaners in other areas. He sent me around to meet his brothers. Okay. And I met his and this is like uh, 94, 95, something like that, you know, 1994, mm -hmm. 1995 or whatever. And it was very uh, inspiring what he said. It was one of those things, though, that I wish I had learned at 10, 11, 12 years old in terms of mentality, right? Because I would have said, I would have, you know, done a few things differently, right? And we would have done things differently as a family and stuff like that in terms of how to really build wealth. We'd have put some other things in place first. You know, right. let's, 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 let's put a business in place before everybody uh, has a home and this, that, and the third, because all that is is mm -hmm. a bill. <laughs> right 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 so, yeah so yeah so i so that piece kind of details that or whatever but it's a piece of my blog and it's called how to move furniture like koreans and whatnot and it's like it had been very widely read both around the country and around the world and what have you because i think it's it's probably to me it's, it was the most instructive story and i'm watching that in as this pandemic happens as kids are graduating from college and different things like that and they're in a rush to get the apartments and different yeah. things like that, and a rush to move out on their own and create their own bills and to get their cars and all these things. And Everett, now ain't the time. You're right. You're right. Now it's not the patient. time. 